Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to yet another college football video. And we got the week 13 poll. I understand that when you guys will be seeing this, Fridays and Thursdays games will have already been played. Like, where like a bunch of these teams have already played and have won their week 13th game. Nobody's lost, at least, except for like Oregon State. So, but we're just, as usual, since I, I record these on Friday nights, we're going to pretend that the actual week 13 games have not happened yet. And you're seeing this on like a Wednesday or some shit. So with that in mind, let's get right into it. Again, this is after all of the week 12 games. So, yeah, Georgia is still at number one because they brutalized Tennessee. Tennessee, man, such a disappointing team, really, and not really talked about enough as one of the most disappointing in the whole country. Everybody talks about the USC's and, you know, the Notre Dame's, but Tennessee, man, to fall to seven and four after being a preseason national championship contender, that is, you know, nobody's talking about that. They've got their ass whooped as of late. Carson Beck, just just the typical Carson Beck game, it feels like at this point, 300 yards, three touchdowns, protecting the football. They ran the ball fairly well. Three receivers over 60 yards, and defensively, they gave up a 70-plus yard touchdown on the very first play. Tennessee... And Jalen Wright scored a big running touchdown on the first play of the game. And after that, lost 38-3. to Georgia's defense was lights out. And yet again, Georgia's starting off a trend. They did it against Missouri, Ole Miss, Tennessee, fucking, who else they do it again? Was it Florida, I think, as well? They give up a touchdown on the first drive and then just clamp down the rest of the game and give up absolutely nothing. So Georgia, they're still number one. They have to prove to me that anybody can even stand a chance against them for me to take them out of number one again. Number two, we got Washington. Nobody is talking about the degree of difficulty in this game. Obviously, no Jalen McMillan because yet they haven't had Jalen McMillan. They've just, they have basically, Washington's offense is one of, if not the best in the country, and they're operating at about, I don't know, 85 to 90% of what they could have been because they lost Cam Davis. They lost Cameron Davis, their starting running back preseason to an injury. And they also lost Jalen McMillan very early on in the season. So that's two starters who would, would have been extremely productive starters on this team, essentially just gone for the last. McMillan's been gone for a couple months now. Davis has been gone the whole year. So they're already starting off on that. Oregon State has lost one home game the last two years before this game. It was to the Caleb Williams USC team last season. And the elements were god-awful. It was pouring rain and it was freezing. It was damn near snowing. So all of that in Washington, Michael Penix and Romo Doomsday specifically, still managed to find a way to win. Washington, similar to the uh, Arizona State game, finding a way to win with their defense first, getting three takeaways on Oregon State. It was an extremely impressive win. Nobody's talking about it, but Washington has been in my top two now for a long time, and they're going to continue to be, honestly, because if they beat Oregon, it's a lock that they're in my top two. But, I mean, I just think this is one of, if not the best offenses in the country and a defense that steps up when they need to. I mean, they stepped up, shut Utah out in the second half, stepped up when they needed to against Oregon, stepped up when they needed to massively against Oregon State and Arizona State. I don't really care if they played poorly against Stanford or whatever because, I mean, they are they are a complete team. And they say, people say they're one-sided and they're one-dimensional. They can only throw the ball, but they've been running the ball very well as of late. So I just think Washington is underrated. I do think they're better than Ohio State and Michigan. And let's go uh, let's on. Number three, I have Ohio State. They are peaking at the right time, in my opinion. They are they are playing damn near flawless football right now. I understand Minnesota's a horrible opponent. I'm not going to dwell on that. Kyle McCord played well. Since getting Travion Henderson back, this offense has just looked completely different. And it's also helped out the defense as well because they've been shut down the last few games. Travion Henderson had 172 yards, two touchdowns this game. Defensively, two sacks, two takeaways. I just think Ohio State's the third best team right now. They're playing well on both sides of the ball, not turning it over. Um, and I just think they're primed to win this matchup against Michigan, to be honest, going to Michigan now. Number four, they've struggled now back-to-back -back games. J.J. McCarthy 
has about 200 passing yards the last two weeks, I believe. It's embarrassingly bad. He has no touchdowns, obviously. He only had one interception this game, but he had about three passes in the first half that could have been intercepted. So they won this game by the skin of their teeth. If Tua's little brother, and I'm, I, I started calling him Tua's little brother after the Ohio State game because he completely sold that game as well. Maryland's quarterback sucks. I'm sorry. You know, people, he has a, a big fan base for some reason. I think just because Tua is his big brother. But, I mean, if he was worth a damn, they would have won this game against Michigan and closed it out with about a possession or two to go. They had chance after chance after chance and did nothing offensively. He missed the guy for a massive touchdown, then threw a pick, two picks in the second half. It was embarrassing. But Michigan looked very bad against Maryland, man. Blake Corum looked solid. He's up to 20 touchdowns in the year. Defensively, they had their three takeaways, four sacks. I know they gave up 24 to Maryland. Their defense did about all they could because the offense, the defense got a defensive touchdown and two safeties, I think. So the defense scored about 11 points. The offense struggled mightily against Maryland. So, I mean, I just, I have no confidence in Michigan at this point. I mean, I bumped them all the way into the top three after the Penn State game, and now they're just falling. And, I mean, I just, I don't know, man. The two best teams they've played, Maryland and Penn State, they look bad against both of them for their standards, that is. So I have no confidence in Michigan going into the Ohio State game. I expect them to lose, and then I can finally drop Michigan out of my top four. Oregon beat the breaks off Arizona State. They were damn near flawless in the first half. Um, Bo Nix, yet another game of six touchdowns. He had over 400 yards. They ran the ball not as well as they'd like to, but more than enough. Four receivers over 75 yards defensively. I mean, you held Arizona State to 13 points. This is a this is an in-conference opponent that you dominated. Oregon is now putting together a resume of absolutely dominating these other Pac-12 teams, notably Colorado, Arizona State, Utah, which was so impressive, USC. I mean, they just beat Oregon State in real life in a dominant fashion at home. Oregon is one of the four best teams in the country. I'm just waiting on Ohio State slash Michigan to lose so I can bump them into my top four. And obviously the winner of Oregon-Washington will make the college football playoff. Florida State, look, the Jordan-Travis injury is devastating. Prayers up to him. And it's just, you know, it reminds me of the Hendon Hooker injury. You know, it's like it's like the worst time to get injured. It's right before your team is poised to make a playoff push, but you also have no eligibility left, so you can't come back. It hurts your draft stock. It's just, it's a lose, lose, lose for Jordan Travis, man. So prayers up for him. That is a devastating injury. As far as Florida State's concerned, obviously, if you lose your quarterback, I have to drop you, especially when Oregon is playing so well. But I'll say this. I do expect them to beat Florida. If they beat Florida, and if they beat Louisville in the conference championship, I don't know how you keep them out of the playoff. For me personally, will they make it into my top four again? I I think maybe. I think maybe. Like, if Oregon loses the Pac-12 championship game and the loser of Michigan-Ohio State, I do expect Florida State to reemerge in my top four if they win back-to-back. But, I mean, Florida and Louisville, it's, it's, it's not two easy opponents, okay? These are two games where you're going to need good quarterback play in order to win. What I love about this game against North Alabama is that they were able to run the ball well. They need to lean on Trey Benson now. It's been, you know, it's been something that has come and gone as the season as as the season has wore on. Florida State's run game has not been consistent, and they're going to need a consistent run game and a very good run game if they want to win these next two games, which they have to win if they have any shot of making the college football playoff. Alabama beat Chattanooga. You can read the stats there if you want. Uh, nobody cares. It's Chattanooga. Texas at eight. They beat Iowa State in a close game. Yet another close game for Texas. Quinn Ewers came back, looked good. Um, was he back last game even? I don't know. I mean, he's been back for a while now, I think. But Iowa State, not a very tough opponent. Actually, no, I'll, let me let me clarify. One of the better Big 12 teams. I mean, they're better than fucking Houston, which gave Texas a very close game. Uh, they did not run the ball very well in the absence of Jonathan Brooks. They're still looking 
for that substitute. Six receivers over 30 yards, you were spread the ball out well. Defensively, they played more than well enough. Texas, a double-digit win over a Big 12 team. Do I see any shot of them making the college football playoff? Not really. They just need too many things to happen. I would say the Florida State injury helps them a lot. You know, if Florida State were to lose in the ACC championship game, loser of Michigan, Ohio State, you know, you probably jump them. Texas obviously has to win the Big 12 championship game. But if Oregon, if if Oregon, Florida State, and then Michigan, Ohio State, I guess there's a chance. And you'd also need Alabama to lose, obviously. So I I don't know. Actually, or would you need Alabama to win? Because then you'd have the head to head. I don't know. I don't I don't really see a, a realistic chance. Obviously, though, I do expect them to still make it into my top five or six by the end of the year. If they look really good in the Big 12 championship game and win the Big 12 championship game, then I'll probably have Texas in my top five or six. It's been a great season for Texas. You know, let's not try and discredit anything here. They are primed for a very, very good season next year in the SEC, and they should be proud of what they put together already. Missouri at number nine. It was a close game against Florida. They needed, I think it was a fourth at 19 or something like that. So Florida, they, you know, they find ways to lose big games. We know this. Brady Cook looked good, 177 rushing yards. Luther Burden finally had his real bounce back game after an amazing first five or six games this season. He kind of slowed down, nine catches, 158 this game. Defensively, Florida's not a bad offense. You know, when when Graham Mertz is going, it's kind of hard to slow them down. They still had two takeaways, two sacks, though, for Missouri. So, I mean, it's a good win. This is a thing. Missouri in the past probably loses this game, you know. This is a new Missouri. I mean, they're beating their SEC East teams, which have historically been much better than them. Tennessee, Florida. I mean, they gave Georgia a game. I mean, I I think this game was kind of the the real game that marked Missouri as just a different I, – it was probably Tennessee. But this game, this Missouri team wins this type of game. In the previous years, we don't see this. So – I'm just ha- I I've liked watching Missouri this season. I've enjoyed keeping up with them. I think they're a good story and they're a really good team. So Missouri's at number nine for me. Ole Miss at ten. They they played UL Monroe. I'm not gonna even acknowledge much of this game. I mean you can look the stats right there. It's UL Monroe. Ole Miss still in my top ten though. LSU they played Georgia State. You know I, I really do hate some of the scheduling here. For these SEC teams, but I mean, you can look at it right there. Jaden Daniels had eight touchdowns. I mean, <laughs> God damn, did he have to play as long as he played in this game? Absolutely not. Would I have done the same thing? Absolutely. <laughs> if I'm if I'm Brian Kelly, I'm trying to get Jaden Daniels the Heisman. Um, they ran the ball well. They had three receivers with over a hundred yards and a touchdown. <laughs> oh man, Jaden Daniels. I I probably will make a video of my own Heisman opinions and who I think should be up there and acknowledge and all that. Jaden Daniels, man, it's hard to deny that he has just been the best player in college football this season. A game like this, I mean, that it kind of just says everything it needs to. Louisville at 12. You know, I gained some respect for Louisville this game. I have been notably down on them. Them and Oregon State, really. I just have not believed in them as much as some of these other teams because I don't really trust their quarterbacks. But Jack Plummer playing, in my opinion, his best game of the season, and especially the reason I have respect for the Louisville after this game is because they put together a great offensive performance, really without their two biggest stars, in my opinion. Jawar Jordan, the running back, and Jamar Thrash, the wide receiver. Neither of them had spectacular games, and Louisville still finds a way to beat a not bad Miami team. You know, Miami... People look at their record. They look at their coach. They love to hate on them. Miami's not a bad team whatsoever. They have one of the best rosters in the ACC. And my and Louisville beating them on the road, I believe, this is a good win. Uh, defensively, not what I've come to expect from Louisville, giving up nearly 500 yards to, to Van Dyke. But still, offensively, like I said, they found a way to get it done. And they have a lot of momentum now going against Florida State. I know they have one more game to play against Kentucky, but it doesn't affect their ACC championship odds. Does Louisville have a shot of the playoff? No, absolutely not. But now without Jordan Travis, I'd say it's about a 40% chance 
maybe a 35% chance they beat Florida State. If they pull off these back-to-back -back wins, Louisville could finish in the top six or seven on my rankings, at least, which would be just mind-blowing. I didn't even give Louisville a, 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 like a thought preseason. And for them to finish that high, that would be an outstanding season for the Cardinals. Tulane at 13, you know, I just, I, I don't know what it is about Tulane. I want them to be better than they are, I think is what it is. They just beat UTSA in real life, so, you know, or not, not, this is real life, but, you know, you know what I mean. Michael Pratt had a solid game against FAU. Makai Hughes kind of struggled, uh, less than 100 yards, but still, you can look at his stats since they've been heavily featuring him. Chris Brazel had an amazing game, over 100 yards and a touchdown. And then defensively, they got after it, five sacks to take away. Tulane, it's just, I just, I hope that they're about to kind of take it into second year, if you will, with the game against UTSA and then the AAC championship. Because they have not, they have not been dominating the conference opponents like I would like them to be, like Liberty's doing, for example. You know, I wish Tulane was just a step above where they are, really. I think a lot of that comes down to not having a real number one receiver, not being able to air it out. They're kind of having to rely on a run game that's that's good, but not great. So we'll see what Tulane ends up putting together. I think defensively, as, defensively is where they really stand out to me. You know, great performances against FAU, East Carolina. So we'll see what they bring to the AAC championship game and what type of a bowl game they end up playing. Notre Dame. They beat Wake Forest. You know, this was the dominant win that we've been looking for for months really now from Notre Dame. They started off 4-0. They started off on fire. The game against Ohio State did not go their way, and then they, they, their season just kind of fell apart. This was a game they needed against a very bad Wake Forest team. I'll give you that. Sam Hartman did not have 24 touchdowns. Um, I think he had four touchdowns, if I'm correct in that assessment. That was a typo. Audric Estime has been their best player on the whole team. Five receivers over 35 yards. Defensively, they played very well. I'm not going to spend much time on this. It's just, you know, how good of a team do I think Notre Dame is? It's kind of a Penn State situation, really, where I feel like if they played a big game, they'd probably lose. But against a Wake Forest or anybody outside the top 25, I feel like they'd probably beat them handedly. But I, I don't know. It's hard to say with Notre Dame, man. It's such an inconsistent team. Penn State struggled versus Rutgers. I know the final score says 27-6, but it was not that close. Drew Aller yet, like, yet again sucked. I have I have lost all faith in Penn State. You know, I'll just be brutally honest with you. At least they've gotten their run game going as of late. It's really all they have going for them offensively. Defensively, we know they're amazing. It's top 10 in the country, maybe even top 5. Um, three, three sacks, three takeaways, only 130 passing yards allowed. Drew Aller got outplayed by goddamn Montague, whatever Rutgers quarterback his name is. Uh, I have no faith whatsoever in this passing offense for Penn State. And without a passing game, you can't win big games. It, 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 point blank. Um, so that's that. This whole screen of teams is teams that really I just – I don't I don't have confidence in them winning any sort of big game. Moving on to Oklahoma, they beat BYU. And the story of Oklahoma's season really is struggling against Big 12 competition. Whether it's games you win close, like this game against BYU, or UCF, or games you lose that you probably shouldn't lose, like Kansas and Oklahoma State. Oklahoma has struggled where Texas has sort of not struggled. Oklahoma won their big game. They won their Super Bowl against Texas, but they couldn't they couldn't clean up Kansas or, or Oklahoma State, whereas Texas lost their biggest game. Well, but they also beat Alabama, and then they've won all their games they needed to against the BYUs and the Iowa States and the TCUs and the Kansas States. Oklahoma has not done that, and that's why that even though they peak all the way at like six or seven, they have not they have now fallen off into number sixteen for me. Dylan Gabriel had a good night a good not great game. They struggled to run the ball as they have all season really. And then defensively giving up twenty four to BYU is just unacceptable really. They had three takeaways, had like a hundred yard pick six, I think. But this game was far too close against a not good BYU team. Oklahoma is um, struggling to find any confidence in this team. Arizona at 17. I'll be honest, Arizona, I thought, was just a flash in the pan. But you don't just dominate Utah like what Arizona just did. I understand 
Oregon did, but obviously Oregon, Arizona, very different levels of team, or so I thought. Noah Fafita, you know, since just coming in midseason against USC has looked great, honestly. I mean, I can't remember a, a game so far where I've just looked and he has not played at least well. He made all the throws he needed to, did not put the ball in harm's way. They ran the ball effectively. Uh, McMillan, eight catches, 116 yards and a touchdown. Then defensively, though, three sacks, two takeaways. They they dominated Utah. I mean, I don't know what to say. Utah was a team that I, I, I felt so strangely about this season. It's been so hard to judge them. But Arizona really gave them, in my opinion, their most shocking loss of the season. And I got to pay respect to where it's due. Arizona now has won, what is it, like four or five games in a row? Three of those being against, what, Oregon State, Utah. I swear it was, not, was it UCLA they beat? I don't know. It's been a very good season for Arizona, and they are now in my top 20 for the first time. Oregon State with a loss to Washington. You know, this game, it, it kind of just came down to the difference in quarterback. We knew both teams were going to struggle throwing the football. Michael Penix had three touchdowns, no turnovers. DJ had no touchdowns, two turnovers. So, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Damian Martinez was amazing this game, 167 yards, two touchdowns. And defensively, I think they played a great game defensively against Washington, the three takeaways. But it was just the difference in quarterback. This game came down to, you know, two points that Oregon State just could not pick up pick because they struggled to, to throw the ball when they needed to. So. Tough loss for them. They're down to 18 for me. Liberty, up to 19 after a big win versus the University of Massachusetts. I understand. But Caden Salter, what I don't get is, you know, I just, Caden Salter has been better than a bunch of guys. Like, for example, I don't know why he's not in the conversation but J.J. McCarthy was early in the season because the level of competition there was pretty damn similar, if we're being honest with each other. And J.J. McCarthy struggled against goddamn Bowling Green for for crying out loud. So Caden Salter, I'm not saying he should be a Heisman, but he certainly should be in the top 10 because he has been dominant so far at Liberty. And if they go on to win their conference championship and all that, and they go 13-0, I don't know how you could say that Caden Salter with what he's done this season, should not be at least, like I mentioned, the top five or six for the Heisman Trophy. That's just what I think. They've been the best running running team in the country, I think. That's because Quentin Cooley and Caden Salter have been an amazing running duo. Cooley, you can see down there, over six yards a touch, 10 touchdowns in the year, and they got three takeaways versus UMass. So Liberty's a team I am really interested in seeing who they play in their bowl game. Just looking through here, I'm not really sure. I'd love to see him. Damn, I don't, I don't know. It's tough to say. Maybe against like an LSU. If Liberty keeps winning, then they probably could sneak to like the top 15. I'd like to see Liberty versus LSU. Two great quarterbacks there. That would be an, an exciting game. But Liberty, yeah, they're up to 19 for me, and I expect them to win their next two as well. Couple tough losses here. North Carolina losing to Clemson. I don't know what to think about UNC anymore. Drake May, uh, it just comes down to you can't put up 20 points against an ACC opponent. I don't care who it is. Clemson, they have a good defense. We know this. But Drake May, in one of the biggest games of his career, we know he lost in the ACC championship last year to Clemson, but you'd just love for him to come out, redeem himself, and play a better game than he did, really, because 276 yards, one touchdown, one interception, is just not going to cut it. Morion Hampton is probably the best running back in the country. I think it's safe to say at this point he has had the best season out of anybody. Um, and nobody's talking about it whatsoever. Nobody's mentioning Omarion Hampton when, when they should be. I mean, Drake May's been solid. Devontae Walker has been a cool story since coming back. He's just been so good. But Omarion Hampton has carried this UNC offense at times. And defensively, give up 31 to Clemson. They had two takeaways. Defense did their job, to be honest. Offense has to do more in the situation, and North Carolina continues to be one of the most disappointing teams in the country. Utah, honestly, looking back at it now, I'm not really sure how I kept them in my top 25 because, I mean, they were at, what? what's that? They were at 12 for me 
after a fight against Washington. And then the, after this loss, yeah, this might have been a mistake on my part. Bryson Barnes, you know, I'll say this. He's better than I thought he was, but he absolutely turns it over way too much, man. They can't trust him to throw the ball downfield without him making multiple mistakes, which result in the other team getting the ball. Utah cannot run the ball consistently whatsoever. Um, since the USC game, it's just been all downhill from there. Um, I think they've lost three games since then to Washington, Oregon, and now this game against Arizona. Utah has fallen off a cliff, and it's tough to say why, but they just turnovers offensively, their defense crumbling as of late that, you know, from going from the best defense in the Pac-12 to I don't even know now. It, it's it's tough to say, man. Utah, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Oregon, or sorry, Oklahoma State, they beat Houston close. Allen Bowman, 348 yards, two touchdowns. Ollie Gordon with a massive bounce back game when they needed it most. 180 yards, three touchdowns. Brennan Presley, 15 catches, 189 yards. Defense got their two takeaways. Oklahoma State, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what the requirements are. I To make the Big 12 championship game, I think they have the tiebreaker still over Oklahoma, right? So are they in? Are they into the Big 12 championship? I have no clue. Uh, we will see, I guess. I'm trying to look right now and see uh, what the standings are and all that. But let me see. It doesn't say. I don't I don't know who's playing the Big 12 championship game. But uh let me just look at it like this. It says that it says that both are to be decided. I know Texas has locked their spot up already, but hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It says right here that Oklahoma is one spot ahead of Oklahoma State, but I guess we'll just have to they play BYU, so we'll see what, what happens there. But uh, they're at 22 for me. I just – they're so inconsistent. They lost their games to UCF and South Alabama by so much. I just don't have much faith in them beating any of these other top teams up here. And then now it's just a crapshoot, really. Kansas State, they beat Kansas. Will Howard had a solid game. They run the ball very well at Kansas State. Notably, due to DJ Giddens. And then defensively, they got their three takeaways. Kansas, Kansas was on their third string quarterback, I believe. So probably not a great win in hindsight, only winning by four against that. But still, I mean, Kansas State's been a team that has kind of been near there all season, you know, in this top level. I think they're supposed to be eight and three, actually, not seven and three. But I mean, who, who cares? It's Kansas State. It's 20, they're number 23. SMU at 24, they beat Memphis. I wanted to throw some other AAC team in here. SMU, I think, is now confirmed to be playing Tulane in the AAC championship game. Preston Stone, very good game against Memphis. Always 300 yards, three touchdowns. They run the ball very well at SMU. Over 150 rushing yards this game. And they spread the ball around. They don't have a number one receiver, but they have a lot of guys that they can use. Uh, seven receivers this game with over 15 yards. And then defensively, they got their sack, got their takeaway. Memphis is a very good offense, so you may look at it and say, oh, 34 points allowed to Memphis, but Memphis is a good team. SMU with a close win there, I'm very much looking forward to them versus Tulane because I think they have a good shot to beat Tulane in the AAC championship game. James Madison. James Madison lost, y'all. Lost in overtime to App State. Uh, it was a close one, but it was James Madison's running game which ended up coming back to bite them. It's been suspect all season. And when they needed it most, they only ran for 1.8 yards per carry. It was tragic, man. Jordan McLeod, he did all he could, almost 300 yards, two touchdowns. But James Madison, that defense could not force enough stops. That offense could not score enough points. And they end up dropping their first game of the season to App State. They're still in my top 25, though. They could beat a lot of teams. But that run game, I just don't know if they could – you know, put together a dominant running performance, especially against any of these teams I have above them. With that being said, y'all, thank you for watching. If you like, the, please enjoy the video. Or, uh, if you enjoyed the video, <laughs> please leave a like, subscribe if you're new, comment your thoughts, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Is out the motherfucker back? Right out the
niggas don't know how to act.